And now the first of the new S4 Delta Lancers, both supercharged and turbocharged, in the hands of Marco Alain. Some say a real favourite for this event, even as the car is having its World Championship debut. And yes, he's coming in for a great time, fastest time of the day, 1 minute 30 seconds. Now the second of the Lancers, Henri Toivonen. Can he match Marco Alain's time? Not quite, just a second slower, but he's equal second with Timo Salon on 1 minute 31. Don't forget, Henry still has to regain his confidence after his severe back injuries early in the year. It's now 9 o'clock in the morning and we're on to Clumber Park, near Mansfield, and the Lanciers are beginning to push out ahead of the rest of the field. First, Marco Alain. Stretches his one second lead to eight seconds here at Clumber Park. And now Henry Toivonen supporting his leader in second place. But he's much slower here, 12 seconds slower on 3 minutes 50 as against Alain's 3.38. And as a result, Toivonen drops two places to fourth. And we move on now to stage three, which is Chatsworth, the famous country house in Derbyshire, with Marco Allen in the lead by some eight seconds. And in fourth place, Henry Toivonen doing considerably better than we expected earlier on today. Move on to Trentham Gardens in the Potteries. Alain still in the lead by some eight seconds from Callie Grundle. In third place, Henry Toivonen. He's just 12 seconds off the lead. And now onto special stage five, Western Park in Shropshire. Alain still in the lead by just three seconds from his teammate, Henry Toivonen. But Toivonen hits trouble here. He runs off the road, hits a log, as we shall see later. Park near Birmingham and here you can see the damage to Henry Toivonen's car sustained on that log at the previous stage Western Park when he crashed with Ari Vatman and now on to special stage 20 Mikola still in the lead just uh, three seconds now ahead of Timo Salonen with Marco Alain back in third place but Salonen's about to go out with oil pressure trouble leaving Allen in second back to the plot Toivonen in fourth place Mikael Sundström up to four. Per Eklund in the Clarion back car, fifth. Nothing like an older version to have reliability. A car that's been truly tested over the years in rallying. And in sixth place now, Ewer Kankin. But he's having rear axle or clutch bothers. He's not quite certain what the trouble is. Jim McRae steadily moving up the field, now seventh. And so over Lake Van Erne. And on to stage 25, Ditnant. Toivon is now in trouble. As a mysterious fuel leakage, he's going through petrol at a rate of knots, something like 50 litres per five miles. Very unsure as to whether he'll make the rest halt back in Nottingham. And into service comes leader Marco Alain. Well, car is going all the time, no problem, and I hope in Thursday also is coming, but that's a long way, and like in that first lap is still two stages, but in no technical problem, only a little bit misfiring in all yesterday night, but not like in no transmission or something like this, in no problem. Yeah, we had to change the clutch because it was, we did, I can't remember the number of stage, 23 or something, almost without clutch and the clutch is, was losing all the time, so we changed it and now the limited slip is broken, so we are going to change the rear axle also. That has been broken, it broke last night, so still it's, it's still going okay, but we lose quite a lot of time, especially on the tight corners, because the inside tyre is spinning only. And With so many four-wheel drive cars dropping out, do you think there's a, a real chance of you winning now? Uh, no. <laughs> yes, good chance to win two-wheel drive class, but not never beat four-wheel drives. I mean, 
rally like this, especially this when it's slippery and everything. It's uh, two wheel drive cars. Time is over. It's gone now. <laughs> what, what, what's your opinion? Well, I'm sure there. Tony Bond in second place. Yes, I am very pleased with my car and everything going well. There's not no problem. Has it amazed you how many people are no longer running? Yes, that's also in also yesterday. You know, in maybe too many spectators in in states and I come in a little bit slow down in some place, you know, in full of people in road, but like normally it's no big problem here. Have you had any problems yourself with the car yet? Yeah, I have been misfiring all Sunday evening, but I hope in this last lap is no misfiring and engine is going well. It's a hard three days ahead of you now. Yeah. You said at the beginning of the rally this is when it counts. Yeah, now in rally start. That's only Sunday and yesterday is like in small rally and now in heavy rally start. You once told me it was your ambition to win an RAC. Is it close enough now? Maybe. Uh, no, no, no. Still difficult. But I, I hope this plant here is coming well here. And so at 10 o'clock this morning, leg two of the 1985 Lombard RAC rally began. Initially, the cars headed south towards Donington before turning north for Yorkshire and Carlisle. Donington Park, a stage which is a mixture of asphalt on the high-speed racing circuit and loose, bumpy infield rally cross. Marco Olen there, comfortably in the lead, a three-minute cushion between him and the rest of the field. Three minutes, remember, is quite enough to stop on a stage and change a wheel, so you can afford to have a puncture, but little more. The reliability of the Lanciers, totally untried cars, remember, has been an illumination on this event. They're staying together in one piece and putting up tremendous times, Allen here extending his lead by about ten seconds. This unique turbocharged, supercharged setup. A quite extraordinary car. And here, Tony Pond now, in a superb four wheel drift as he comes around that right hander before plunging down into the infield. Remember, just three minutes behind Alain at the overnight halt, and anxious now to stay in contention all the way through to the end of the event. The car doesn't really look the part, but by golly, it doesn't half do the job properly. V6, unsupercharged, unturbocharged, fuel injection. Of course, he doesn't suffer from lag coming out of corners. He can put the power down just when he wants it. And look how stable it is on this right-hander. Not exactly beautiful, though. And in third place, Henri Teuvenen. He's now completely recovered from last night's troubles when he was going through petrol at a rate of knots. Now confident that he can stay in contention and last the rally. And the sun's out. Not for very long, I fear, because the forecasters have scheduled snow in Dolby. Tony Pond now trying to apply the pressure, although he drops, in fact, five seconds on this stage. Still suffering from blocked up nose and the remnants of flu, and he's followed by Henry Teuven, putting up an identical time with his team leader, Marco Alain. Other Lance is now applying pressure. And it's here that Pond starts to make even more impression. Both Lanciers hit trouble. Alain goes straight on the fire break, which brings Pond to within 50 seconds of the lead. Teuven here drops down into the valley of death at Wycombe. With it running late, there's no rest time left, and you know, it's, it's becoming a bit of a, a bit of a mess, really. So, what you've now lost on the road, 15, 20 minutes time, you're going to lose this now over the sleep that you should have had. That's correct. Yeah, and in fact, at the start of the last stage, the drivers were the other drivers. I hasten to add, the foreign drivers. Yes, they they didn't want to go on at all. They were sort of getting very annoyed, very upset. These are these Finnish chaps. I think they're foreign. I don't know where they're from. <laughs> Tony, go and have a rest. Thanks very much indeed. Well, now the car is working very well. Uh, I made a mistake on the last one. I had a spin and went into leads. Lost about 20, 30 seconds there. But otherwise, it's getting exciting. Uh, we drove a few stages back, uh, three and a half stages with uh, just two-wheel drive. 
we lost the front diff and, and lost a couple of minutes again for Tony. But now it seems that we are just 35 seconds behind. Now there's some talk that you're going to have some snow during the, tonight. Does that make you happy or sad? Well, anyway, it's the same for everybody, so it doesn't matter really. You've shortened the, you've closed the gap now between yourself and Tony Pond, yes? Yes, yes. Uh, according to our calculation, it's now 30, uh, 35 seconds, so... Are you, are you planning to close the gap, or are you happy just to sort of play a waiting game and just see what happens between him and Marco at the moment? Well, the last passage that I tried first time on the rally and I went in immediately in the ditch, so I think I'll, I will cool down again. <laughs> Go back to the waiting game? Yeah, that's right. 8.15 this morning in Craig Forest. Most competitors are pleased to see the sun and know that the infamous Kiel de Forest complex is behind them. Not the least rally leader, Marco Elaine. Behind him, Tony Pond, who has paced himself well right from the start. He got within seconds of Elaine at one point, only to drop back with punctures over this group of stages and to fall back into the clutches of the second Lancia of Henry Toivonen. Stage 28, Castle Orr. And Marco Elaine continues to head the field and making it a Lancia 1-2, Henry Toivonen, who, as expected, has gone past Tony Pond. Henry Toivonen and Neil Wilson arrive at the start of the Lightwater Valley stage, still very late on the road and anxious that everything should hold together for these last two stages. And away he goes, hoping for his second win in five years. And so to the final stage, Clumber Park, incredibly icy and snow-covered. Henry Toivonen creeps through. There is no need to prove anything now. He's won the rally. For Marco Elaine, after leading for so long, he takes second place. A tremendous drive from Marco. For me, it's been such an adventure that I could write a book from it. Uh, two spins, once on the roof, one stop on the special stage for having petrol. And then learning the car and... Finishing like a spot. Did you see Marco off? Were you, were you traveling no, after him? Yeah, I was so many minutes behind him, so yeah. I didn't see him. Already a fellow Finn had stopped and helped him back onto the road? Well, that belongs to our system. Huh? That's right. So, I mean, for you now, you must obviously really be looking forward to 1986. That's right. At least I will have the confidence now. The truth now, if somebody had said to you five days ago, in what position would you have been happy to finish? Bearing in mind the car was brand new, you'd had very, very little time to test the car, where would you have been happy to have finished? Top five. And now, you're number one. All the time, I'm first car in road, and, and, and nearly all the time. And No, but you know, I'm not lucky also. But anyway, you know, I am very happy, and Lancia team now is first and second, and Henry is driving very well. Also, Tony Pond taking super rally here. You know, car is no technical problem. Drivers, a little bit problem, <laughs> five, six times spin, off in a row, but I'm learning all the time.